this session, I'm going to cover a couple of the basic concepts on working and getting started with Microsoft Access 2010. As soon as you open Access 2010, this is what you'll be presented with. You have the options to use available templates so you can create a blank database or you can use some sample databases, for example, uh, predefined ones that have been designed by the program. And also you can go and download from office.com different templates that are provided by Microsoft. In our case here, what we're going to do is we're going to create one from scratch. So we're going to make sure we click on blank database and then we're going to give it a name. I'm going to name this just using access. Notice what's different here is that unlike Microsoft Word or you type a document or in Excel you type a document or a spreadsheet and uh, then you save it later. Here you have to create the database. Uh, you save it and then you enter the records and update it as you go. It's also important to keep in mind that as you enter records and data into the Microsoft Access database, the data is saved automatically. Just tell the system where you want to save it. So I'm going to save it under users here in my name and then documents and it's going to be saved under the name using Access 2010. I click on create and at this point we have just started with a blank database. Before we actually get started with creating a blank uh, database here, a couple things as far as the advantages of using Microsoft Access as a database management system. One of the things is that duplicate data is minimized and then secondly is that information is more accurate, reliable, consistent because duplicate data is minimized. So in other words, you have one customer with multiple orders, but you don't have the same customer listed multiple time in those times in those lists. Also, data entry is easier and faster using Microsoft Access Forms, and then information can be viewed and sort it in any way that you prefer using queries, forms, and reports. Also, information is more secure using Microsoft Access because you can limit access to the database by using passwords and different levels of security. Another thing to keep in mind is that multiple users can use the same database at the same time. So notice here we have a table called table one. And at this point, we can just first define the fields. The fields, if you remember from Microsoft Excel, are those headers on the very top of the row here. So we have the customer ID. We can add the other fields for this table. Now notice we'll click here on uh, click to add. And the first thing that it asks us is that this new field that you want to add what type of field is it going to be? Is it going to be a text, number, currency, date, or any of those? So what we do here is it, this is going to be text, for example. So we'll say first name and then just hit enter. Then the next one is going to be last name and that's going to be also a text field. The next one is going to be the address, let's say. So we click on text again and then go to the next one, text. Keep in mind that every piece of data would have it in separate fields. So here we would not put the address all into one field. We'd actually have it as separate because the nice thing is that we can utilize it later, for example, to filter by only certain customers within a zip code or certain customers within a specific state or city and so on. And then if we're going to put a number here, for example, for telephone number, we just choose it's a number field. Now we are ready to enter the actual data in here in this table. For now, we can enter it directly through the table. However, data needs to be entered by using the form or that's the most commonly used way of entering the data. So at this point, we put here the names of the customers. And I'm just pressing tab to move from one field to the other. A couple other things here to keep in mind with tables is that basically you have the different columns and the different rows very similar to Microsoft Excel that we are used to using. Now, 
each one of those it's referred to as a cell very similar to like Microsoft Excel as well these are the different records so this is record number one and that includes all these pieces of data about this customer and that will be record number two each table has what's referred to as a primary key and this is a very important concept the primary key in a table is a field that is marked as unique or that makes each record unique within that table now notice here under ID that record has been marked as unique and that's what differs to customers so because you could have another customer here Hubert Sims and then he could also live at 200 Manor Avenue with all these other pieces of data. However, what makes those two records different is this field here. Notice that the record one is different from record three because of this unique ID that has been assigned to each customer. So even though all the other pieces of data are different, they still are different because of this primary key. There are actually two ways to create, to enter data into a table, either by the right here like we did so far, or you can use the design view. So this design view is actually the easier one. So let me close this one and we'll save this and we'll call this customers. Again, we are saving at this point, we have created the database from before. And now we are just creating a table within the database. So here's the table customers. Now, if we wanted to go back here and notice under the home tab, we have this view and then a drop down. Under view and the drop down, we can choose different views for that specific table. We can click on design view and that'll give you an opportunity here to change the design or the layout of this table. And this is the preferred way of creating the tables actually. So notice at this point, we have the fields that we defined earlier. Notice when we entered first name, we have a text field. And when we entered the telephone number, that was a number field. Now, if we wanted to add additional fields, we can simply add them right here. For example, we just put the name email and then we can define what type of field it is, what type of data is going to be in that field. You can have it as text or any of those in here. The email in this case, it would be text. And then you can also limit the field size. And those would be the field properties here for email. And then you could add additional data, for example, notes. And the notes can be, instead of being just plain text, it could be a memo field which usually can take uh, up to 64,000 characters. So now that we have this table designed with additional fields, we'll click on close here. We'll save the design because you're always, whenever you tinker with the design, you have to save the design of it. However, if you add new records here, um, you don't have to save them, they are saved automatically. Now, if you remember a moment ago, we, we added beyond a telephone number, we added additional fields such as email and notes, and here they are. So that's how you create a, a table. And we'll go into the rest of the components in a moment here. Just before we move any further, here's a couple of things as far as the application itself, the way it works. I was supposed to actually show you this first, but better late than never. Notice you have the Home tab, you have the ribbon, very similar to Microsoft Word, Excel, and the other applications we have used. Under the Home tab, we have all kinds of common functions here. Some of them are similar, but uh, some of them are very particular to Microsoft Access. Then we have the Create tab, and this is where you would create and add new components to a database. Think of it very similar to Microsoft Word in Excel where you create adding different components like charts in Excel or uh, Word Art or other objects in Microsoft Word. And then you have also external data. This is where you can bring in or link to other systems out there like to Excel, other access databases, other system databases, text files, XML files, and so on. And then 
under database tools this is where you can define the relationship between tables or between those lists and these are the different contextual tools or the tabs that shows up depending on what we are doing uh, very similar to what we did in Microsoft Word and, uh, and Excel then here on the left we have this um, navigation or the data sheet view this gives us a listing of all the objects within that database because think of the database with multiple pieces and components to it then on the right hand side this is where we'll see the actual data for that specific table sometimes it's best to just close them and you create something new and that is pretty much to avoid problems and uh, issues that you'll see later.